Hey, Steve Mignani here with some really good junkyard news. If you're gonna be anywhere near Sherman, Texas on March 24th and 25th, know that there's gonna be an outdoor auction uh, put on by Duncan'sAuctions.com of over 200 solid Texas parts vehicles. It's gonna be Fords, GM, Mopar, lots of tractors and even forklifts. These things all have to go. It's an online auction, but also an on-site auction. If you happen to be in Sherman, Texas, you can go and bid in person or again online but all 200 vehicles have to go don't let them get crushed to learn more about this auction which happens on march 24th and 25th of 2023 uh, check it out on duncansauctions.com and keep in mind if you're seeing this after march 24th or 25th 2003 the auction's over with but before then make sure you check it out and save some of these cars don't let them go to the crusher Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the junkyard crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts. It's sounding like a robot, don't I? This is a 1978 Chevy El Camino Super Sport. Now, you gotta remember that 1959 was the first year for the El Camino, and uh, about 20 model years later in 1978, this is what it had come to. Not a bad thing. And keep in mind, too, of course, no El Caminos in 61, 62, or 63. But with that said, 1978 was the first year for the downsized. El Camino and Malibu. In fact, all GMA bodies for 78 shrank by 25%. They were smaller. But again, the one thing about El Camino, this is the only 78 GMA body or any of the later ones that rides on a 117 inch wheelbase. All the others for 78 onward had a 108 inch wheelbase, even the wagons. And that was all about giving the El Camino room for a long bed. We'll get to that in a second. Now in this one here, we see the Super Sport striping. And just as the Super Sport arrived in 1961, uh, 62, as a trim group on a six-cylinder car didn't always mean performance well by this point in time you could get a small engine with your super sport again more on that in a second now super sport at this point in time meant the styled steel wheels we see them here the rally wheels if you will color-coded that burgundy plays into the lower body paint here and that's factory stuff and the little orange stripe here it's been faded but again the super sport graphic on this one and of course the uh, streamlined mirrors on both sides also part of the super sport package and uh the hood was standard, no scoops, no bumps, nothing like that. There would have been a chin, sort of a, a drape, a spoiler type thing, which on this one is, is gone. But anyway, this is basically a super sport. So what's under the hood? 350, 305? Not so fast. That is the 200 cubic inch V6. Now it is a 90 degree. It has some roots in the small block seven, but that's 200 cubic inches. There's also an optional 229 at this point in time, but again, that's not a V8. And the weird thing about it, look how, how long the fan shroud is to make sure that the fan, which is about a mile away from the radiator, gets a good draft and draws the coolant, the cooling air through the radiator core. But again, this is a 200 cube six popper, two barrel carburetor, and this is the base engine in the El Camino and the SS and all Malibus, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, first year right here for this 200 cubic inch engine. Now here we have right here, this is a 1978 Chevy Malibu. Good news for 78, new size Malibu. This was out of Carl Chevrolet in Enfield, Connecticut way back when, but here's the new Malibu. And of course, same bones as we have here in this El Camino. But again, Malibus were strictly 108 inch wheelbase. El Camino specifically 107 inch wheelbase. But here we have here, new size, a whole lot of thinking, uh, a whole lot of good news, good news about size. In other words, downsize, downsize, downsize. This is all about the 1973 OPEC uh, oil embargo when Detroit and the world got scared that gas was not going to be around forever. So smaller, more efficient cars, CAFE, corporate average fuel economy came along, mandates from the government, more on that in a second. But here we have all these smaller cars. You know, they were, they were big enough for adults, but again, they were not like the 77s, which were full-size vehicles. Here's the wagon again on a 108-inch wheelbase, not not on the 117 inch wheelbase seen here. If you look at the distance between the door and that, that's 117 inches. Now we see here, it says here, uh, they're talking here about the new El Camino for 78, again, first year for the little one. Uh, wheelbase has been increased from 116 to 117 to help provide a smooth, easy ride, yet it's shorter and slimmer than the last year's model. Now they're talking about the 77 El Camino, which had a one inch shorter wheelbase, but which was a bigger car. But here's the thing, the 77 El Camino, which was a big car, and the 78 had the same 38 cubic, cubic foot load area, 
more on that in a second, and also 800 pound capacity. So they didn't downsize the load capacity on El Camino despite making the car smaller. And of course, here's the other vehicles here. Now this is important here. A word about GM engines, they're talking about different engines and different plants. This is when GM was getting sued for putting Oldsmobiles and Cadillacs. But here we have here, new V6 standard, efficient V6 design. The V6 engine represents a blend of six cylinder and V8 design characteristics. Although the engine block and cylinder heads are cast iron, the V6 configuration makes these new engines more compact than the conventional V8 and lighter than last year's inline six. Yep, the 256 banger was dropped in 78, not available in these downsized cars. The result is a lighter, more compact engine with impressive fuel economy. And because they take up less space in the engine compartment, they're easier to service. And here's the thing, the uh, 200 cubic inch V6 had 95 horsepower and 160 foot pounds. Meanwhile, the 250 that went away had 110 horse and 190 foot pounds. But again, these cars were lighter by about 600 pounds, so it kind of was a wash. But getting back to CAFE, this is an insert right here that came with this brochure, and it says here, this is the EPA model statements. The federal government says, hey, you have to have this. Predict what your car is going to get. And from this, they, they generated uh, the CAFE. You can see the 3.3 liter gave 19, 25, 21, whereas the 350 at the bottom, 13, 18, 15. Now, here's the thing. That fuel economy was important for two groups, you and me at the pump, and also Uncle Sam, the CAFE, 1978 first year, corporate average fuel economy. Basically, GM and Ford and Chrysler, all makes, had to add their mileage, all their vehicles, divide it out, and 18 was the number to hit. We can see here, El Camino did it, 21, 29, 24, no problem. The, v, the 350 car, 13, 18, 15, there was probably a penalty to be paid. Now, you've got to remember, too, that uh, the uh, 2020 CAFE is 42.4 miles per gallon. That's three years ago. So every year this thing ratchets up and Detroit was told, take it or leave it. Make your cars more fuel efficient. We don't trust you not to do it on your own. And so that's what CAFE is. It's a good thing, but it's also the reason why goofy little engines like this wound up under the hood of small, goofy cars like this. Oops, did I say that? Okay, let's keep walking. And I got to say, these are popular cars, but again, the downsizing is not something GM was going to do on their own. And I kind of get it. But again, they were living in a bubble, you know, when the world is unstable and you can't guarantee gasoline, you got to predict. And that's what happened here. Now, inside this one, uh, these seats are not from this car. But again, this one had the automatic on the column, which was the only way to fly with the 206. No three-speed manuals in this case. But again, uh, the SS, the tiny little emblem that said SS is gone on the far right side of the dash. There's a couple holes, but that would have said SS. Tiny thing. They were not bragging about it. But that block-off plate right there, that's something that we'd seen on a non-AC car like this one. So again, if you didn't pay for air conditioning, Chevy kind of punished you with a cheapskate plate, which you see right there, rather than giving you a specific dashboard cushion that didn't have a hole in it. Welcome to Detroit. But here's the big thing on this. This is the load bed right here, which has the same capacity as 1977. Speaking of 1977, this is what went away. Pretty big car, 1977 El Camino right there, stacked headlights, full-size styling. Actually, that was a mid-size at the time, but here we have uh, the final big chassis. Again, this chassis is 116-inch wheelbase, a little shorter, believe it or not. But here on the right, we see El Camino SS. The sporty package for V8 models includes matching right and left-hand mirrors. And again, in 77, SS meant 305, no six bangers. So again, uh, we see here the El Camino SS, and inside this beautiful catalog, it folds out, and we can see right here, uh, on the right-hand top, it says 305 V8, 350 V8, or yeah, the 250 inline straight six, which was too tall, kind of, to fit under the hood of these downsized 78s. But if you look at the bed, that picture up to 800 pounds of cargo, there it is right there. And in order to get that cargo capacity on the smaller car, Chevrolet did something kind of tricky. You can see the rear window here actually has a bow to it. They pushed the, the load compartment forward rather than a flat wall like 77 kind of an interesting little way to uh, make something out of nothing. Now, one thing about El Camino in 77 and 78 and all of them, standard air shocks. Uh, the point of that was when you put that 800 pound load in the back, you could bottom out if you didn't have the ability to crutch the coil springs with air. And if you want to see where to load it, you go right here to the gas cap, open the filler, and the little valve, the Schrader valve, there it is right there, that thing right there. That's your air shock filler. And this little nylon hose right here would take your air to each of the two shocks and inflate them. The tail would come up a couple inches and be more resistant to bottoming out. 
So again, uh, this is the back of the same size, same capacity, downsized uh, El Camino for 1978. And if you look at this, uh, here, this is kind of interesting right here. Here's a dash here with the AC vent versus the block off we saw inside this particular cheaper version. But again, you know, when you hear the word El Camino SS, you know, your mind goes to 1970 and LS6 four speed Super Sport SS. Well, by 1978, it had returned back to its 1962 roots where you could get a six banger in your Impala SS. If you wanted the 409, you'd get that, but you could also get a 283, 327, or the six popper. Same in 78. Everything goes around, comes around. So that's the story of how the downsized Chevy El Camino for 1978 retained the nearly full size bed capacity, but with a much smaller engine up front to meet cafe. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel. Um, share this with your friends, give it a like, and by all means, hit the bell so you know when the next video is coming out, which is tomorrow morning.